Hey guys, System here, and this is all the mod 7 to the sky. Overall, having a great day. I'm a self fantastic one. So let's go ahead and push forward and, uh, you know, just progress through the pack as per usual. So in between episodes, I've gone ahead and worked on our base a fair amount, I guess. I set up two mob farms, kind of show you that uh, there in a second. Right here, if we look at our system here, you'll see I have it set to show fluids only. We have a lot of water in there, so max in water. Pink slime, we got essence, and we got latex. And every once in a while, you'll see meat kind of pop up for a second as well. Have the meat being stored in a little different place, actually. It's, uh, oh, it's over here, right? So over here, we've got this tank. It has uh, only a little tiny bit of meat in there right now, only because I drained it out. Basically, I went ahead and made one of these, a meat beater. So you can see there, it has 183 buckets in it. It holds 512. But with that, I can just use it on the tank. It'll drain the meat out of it, put it inside of that. And that auto feed me and it gives you a pretty good saturation too like uh half a bar i don't know how many buckets it uses uh per feet though so either way just a way kind of doing our food here and uh yeah don't actually have to worry about any real food at all outside of that i guess i should show you how i'm storing the liquids as well so down here somewhere there you go got these uh 64k me fluid storage cells go ahead and uh, show you how we have uh one kind of set up here made one of these tables here it was in the quest line right but the cell workbench Allows you to do like filtering on the dries, right? So you can set uh, what items can go in there. So these ones can hold five types as opposed to six, 63, like the regular door cells. But I wanted to throw this upgrade in here too. Overflow destruction card. Basically, if this ever gets totally full, it'll void off any excess fluid. So then jump down here. This is our two mob farms. So we have one with the dreadful dirt. So it works exactly like delightful. Just use the rotten egg there and then you're good. And this one here is our passive. Uh, this one's set up super simply, so I'm just using laser IO, so we do a single side here, but it's just uh, getting power, pulling the items, and, i uh, sorry, pulling the liquids, and uh, putting in the tanks, so super easy in that regards. I have them filtered as well, so they just uh, send the liquids to the proper place, and uh, yeah, this works good, super, super easy. This here, though, you may notice there's a little weird thing on the side here with a trash can. The grass, this is kind of problematic, so that grass actually grows randomly when the mobs spawn in. And uh, it'll get up to two tall grass. And even with the one tall, they can't spawn those spots right now. Like, no passive mobs can spawn those spots. But when it gets to two tall, I have this uh, builder kind of set on a loop. And uh, what it does is it breaks the two tall grass. And then they're able to spawn those spots again. So it doesn't actually completely shut down my farm. Over here, we got uh, another setup. This one is just for all our drops from our, I guess, mob farm here. So we've got an ender chest pulling the items into the system. Here's the essence. And down there, we have a trash can. And I just did filtering. So just basic filtering here. Then another filter card right there. Then on the bottom, I did all this kind of filtering as well. I could have used the uh, tag filter, I guess, as well to deal with the armors much more cleanly because I would have probably only had to put one helmet in the filter, you know what I mean? But either way, this works out either way. And uh, yeah, works out just fine. So everything's filtered out. And uh, everything's working great. This farm's actually working really well. Um, it's not insanely fast, mind you, because it's only a 5x5, five five, but... It's doing everything it needs to. So I want to go ahead and actually set up a Inferium farm. So I'm just grabbing us a few things here. I have the Inferium seed, so I have that. I have some lily pads because we'll need them as well. We're going to make some of these uh, lily pads of fertility. They're a little hard to make, actually, especially since the the biome I'm in. I don't get regular creepers. I get dripstone creepers, and I get, uh, like, stone creepers. There's, like, weird variants. So I don't get a lot of these glands, but uh, you may in your, I guess, biome, right? But anyway, do that there. Go ahead and uh, grab this here. We've got our lily pads of fertility. Got the lily pads, of course, from our marine fisher. So really easy there. Then we need a harvesting pylon. So let's grab everything we need from that. And uh, this should be pretty much, uh, pretty easy, I should say, to automate, actually. So we'll kind of get it done real quick. And then get the, the uh, compressing down to the materials as well, because I don't think that'll be very hard either. Wait, anyway, let's do you, do that. May set up a smaller farm like this too, actually, for like uh, crops as well, just so we have all that stuff. So that is good there. I think that's pretty much everything. Oh, we need a hoe as well, actually. Let's get a hoe here. We need an unbreakable one because, uh, well, this is going to use durability when it's in the machine, right? So let's do a all the modium hoe. I think I still have, oh, that was completely wrong. So we have this here. We go, two of them. Then grab ourselves the uh, plates as well. Fantastic. And then we have a all the modium hoe. Now I'll handle that. Uh, should grab a sink just so we have water. And then we should be ready to go ahead and set this up. We're just going to set this up downstairs too. Uh, right beside our mom farm, I think, right? So maybe some dirt. <laughs> Just some dirt and maybe a bucket. Okay, so I think that's everything we need for the initial setup. Then we'll come back and grab a uh, tier three crafter to do the auto crafting. Also, I want that free experience, man. Okay, <laughs> right. go and uh, head down here. 
Uh, we'll probably set it off on the side of it here. I'll just do a little area. We're just gonna really do a little small one too. We can actually do it uh, quite large. We could do like a nine by nine. I don't think we need it though. So I just need it to get us Inferium in the amounts that we need, right? We already have like 40,000. I don't think I need a ton more. I probably only need like a 100,000 or so, I guess by the end of the pack, but I just want to get it at a good rate. There you go. Let's go ahead and head up here, do that. Also, I'm not going to be doing a ton of uh, seeds either. This is going to be mostly, I guess for the pack, things like Obsidian maybe, then I need the Unobtainium, Vibranium, all the Modium, just things I'm not getting otherwise. We're actually getting most things from other sources in this pack. So we shouldn't actually need a, you know, giant kind of field of uh, mystical seeds. I just need it to work quite well. But anyway, we're gonna set up a five to five five here. That should be good. I think the light levels are messed up too. I didn't show that either actually. Uh, this thing here, the frozen pearl. So the feral flares, when they move their light, uh, they just expand, right? So it'll go through walls. You have to use the, what you call it there? The frozen pearl to deactivate that light in the area. That's how I kept that dark, right? But it also made areas over here dark as well. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. Let's grab some lanterns here. Do that. Because I think the lighting might be too low for seeds here. So just to make sure we are good. Just uh, throw those in the corner. Just like this. And that should be good. Then we should be able to grab some of this red fertilizer. And just use it on the land. And this will be our initial kind of fertilizer, right? Later on we'll be able to switch to the, um, the soils from mystical agriculture itself. Which will make it so they drop more items, right? But for right now this is fine. Uh, this here, the harvesting pylon, will end up going right in the center, right? So it'll sit there. It actually sits in the water. Uh, I think we also need to go ahead and get ourselves some water channels here. How many of these did we get? 19. We could actually do five on each side. Actually, almost five on one side. We'll do it either way. Go ahead and try to set that up. So go ahead and uh, use our fancy dancy shovel here. <laughs> Something I almost never have is a shovel. There we go, got all our water in place and uh, we're good there. And I guess the last thing we need to do really is uh, put the seeds down and get the hoe in, right? So we're all hoed up. I don't actually need to keep the hoe on me anymore. So put that there, make sure it's on five by five. Then we should be able to just uh, start planting our Inferium seeds, right? This farmland actually is pretty fast too. It's actually, it grows things faster. Uh, did not as many items, mind you, not as many drops, but it grows things faster than the mystical agriculture uh, soil as well. So it actually ticks rates is higher on this. And anyway, we'll start putting these down. Actually, I already went ahead and turned off our particles as well, because these things are insane. Actually, I think I have them set the minimal. I'll show you what it looks like here, though. Options, video settings, and go to, I guess, all. There you go. And that's going to start going insane there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, then once they start clicking here, it should uh, start growing at a pretty good pace here. Oh, we need to get a chest on top of that, too. It doesn't actually work, I don't think, with a chest on top of it. Go ahead and grab a chest here. Go ahead and do that. And this should start automatically harvesting this stuff, actually. There you go. It's actually starting to go in the chest. You see here, it's a uh, particle madness, right? These things here too, the little pads of fertility, are like water. So they have the same range as like a water pocket fertilizing the land. So it's like four away, right? So works out either way. And uh, that's our initial uh, inferium farm. And you can see here, it's not insanely fast. But that's pretty good. That's not bad at all, is it? It's actually pretty decent. Also, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn our particles back down. Let's go ahead and uh, turn that to minimal. There you go. And then we need to go ahead and make this here, a fusion crystal. And then we'll need a crafter as well. So let's go ahead and uh, get that made. I guess I should just put this in the system. Why am I doing this the hard way? I could just do this, right? And this here, right? Here you go. Awesome. We got six of those. We go ahead and uh, drop them off. I had way more than I needed. And then with that, I think we need to go ahead and make a gem is what it was. Yeah, this prosperity gemstone. And then we go ahead and uh, actually get that crafted up. And then we should be able to finally make our master infusion. So there you go. This one has unlimited uses. Super easy to make, right? Uh, next thing we want to do is uh, get this automated. We want to automate this entire process. So go ahead and grab ourselves a cable. Pop it up here. Probably won't even connect the cable quite yet. We'll just kind of put it up there. Uh, I don't like it facing that way, though. <laughs> can you please face forward? I like that way more. Uh, can I have you? Uh, like that. There we go. I'll have it like that. Go ahead and grab ourselves a flux point. Go ahead and give that to the back of it. Now this is the tier three of it, so not hard to make, but makes it so you can do eight recipes kind of inside of this. We'll have to kind of configure this entire thing too, actually. How much uh, Inferium do I have down there? Good amount to start us off. I think that's enough for do everything we need to do for this recipe, actually. Oh, I think you have to choose a recipe first. Yeah. Then it kind of wipes it. 
So you choose a recipe, then you kind of fill up the kind of slots here, how you want them, right? So I'm just going to do probably like four stacks of the Inferium here. Then I'm going to click this little remember button. And I pull that out, actually remembers that Inferium belongs there, which is kind of what I want. Then we're just going to set up the recipe just like that. Then we want to change the setting here. Results of the crafting operation will stay in the input buffer. So if I click uh, apply here, and then, oh, I need to have one of these in there, don't I? Probably. Wait, why Why you no do the thing? <laughs> oh, I don't have that in there. I'm told dirt. There you go. And it'll start making that level, right? So that's fine. Then it puts that back there. I'm going to tell it to remember that too. Two slots saved for the uh, Prudentium as well. Go ahead and put that in there. Then we should be able to go ahead and set up our second recipe. So again, same thing. That is here. Then that should be good. We need to save that on internal. Apply that one. And then I may have to go ahead and make one of them. Oh no, I just had to move something apparently. I don't know why I had to move something there. Then I'll tell it to remember that as well. Then we'll go to the next recipe. Do the same thing again. There. Make sure it remembers. Apply it. And... Oh, I, did, I, did, I had the wrong setting there. Okay. So we have it either way. So I can just do that now. Pop that there. I'll turn to internal again. Change that recipe. There you go. Don't do what I do. Make sure you always put it on internal, except for the last recipe. It's the only last recipe you want to have a different setting there. Anyway, that should be good. Then we should be able to head here. Do that. Grab this. And then we should be able to do that. And on this one, we want... This one here, result of crafting operation, we'll go to the output buffer, but remaining items like buckets, so this is considered like a bucket, right? Will stay in the input. So I should be able to do that now. And then hopefully that starts making stuff. There you go, awesome. So as it comes in now, it should just start automatically crafting it. I don't know what's why it's making me pull it in and out. I don't know why it's doing that, but that should uh, start coming in there now, right? I can actually fill that up too. So I'll speed that up. Do I have uh, any of those cards on me? I don't need anything super fast. Oh, I do have an ultimate. I guess that is super fast. Either way, do that there. There you go. That'll just uh, start automatically making our Supreme Essence. Then I can just move that to the system. There is one more tier over this, but I mean, it's just one more step of crafting, right? So we're going ahead and uh, done a little bit of tweaking here. I went ahead and uh, made some recipes here for the different levels of the Essence. So all the Essence is kind of has a recipe to be crafted down, basically, is what's going on. If I go to, I guess, uh, Essence here. I think it comes up with Essence, right? Yeah, this stuff here, not creative. I want the Insanium. You can actually use Insanium, so good to use on it, to craft that down to the Supremium, right? So I'll have a recipe. I guess it's auto-compacting it down to the uh, the Insanium now. Then I'll have a way to craft it back down to the lower stuff if I need it, right? So it'll just uh, be a nice way of handling that. Uh, it's on this side, right? right? Yeah, down here. There you go. Also, I added uh, two more Ender Chests here. So I have... I don't know why I did that. Have one chest here. This is feeding from the drawer that feeds the Inferium into our system from our sifting setup. So as, uh, we have a little bit coming through there. And that just goes in here and gets auto-crafted. You see now I have the recipe for the Insanium as well. Uh, so I did click remember on this because I know people will mention it. I didn't have a slot here remembered for the uh, Imperium. Then I just output it here. You can see here it's getting caught because I don't have a drawer yet. And apparently I need some void upgrades on Sirtis. And then some um, storage upgrades on our... Osmium, doesn't matter too much, I guess. The second, go ahead and get this into a drawer real quick. Doesn't matter where it goes. I'll just uh, put it there. There you go. But now if I wanted uh, Supremium, I could just go here. Say I want 10. Bam, there you go. Just cross it back down. So if I need it, I can use it. I don't have to do... The only hand. The only one I have to do by hand right now is the base level Inferium. Because uh, Inferium, if I... The way I have it set up anyway, it would uh, get automatically pulled into there. Right, so to get automatically pulled in that chest and then craft it up again, so I'll have to do that in my inventory. But all the other stuff will work just fine. Also, I need to get one more gland, I think I actually need like three more glands, right? Then I can actually get this last lily pad because this is drive me nuts. Oh, I should show you that too. I kind of forgot to tell you guys that too. There's an enchant that makes it so it like if you're like me, you don't have enough of that stuff. Uh, is it in here? No, it's right here. There you go. This sword here has an enchant on it, it's called Severing 2 significantly increases your chance of reliquary drop. So if you have, uh, like me, and just don't have the mobs in your biome, you can go to the other, just hunt them that way, and use that. Apparently it goes up to level 7, but I only have level 2. But either way, it's a much better way of getting the glands and stuff. So I'm just going ahead and made us two more machines. I made this one here, Chapman Applicator. 
And then I also made us an enchantment extractor. I want to be able to move enchantments around. So this could help us with that, right? So let's go ahead and do this here. That's totally an item pipe. That is not what we need at all. Uh, we need an uh, energy pipe. There you go. Do uh, that right there. Then we'll need uh, some kind of wrench. Doesn't even matter. I wish this pack had the morpher tool. I really wish it did. But anyway, let's do that there. May have to add some upgrades, but I don't think these are very big power hogs at all. So this one here needs essence. So it applies and chants with essence. I thought this one got essence, uh, needed essence, but it doesn't. I think it gets essence sometimes. Maybe that's what it is. Let's pull that off for now. That is actually kind of pointless now I see it. Let's uh, pull this off too. I guess I only need the one uh, AE2 connection if it's going to be like that. Okay, so that is good there. We should be able to, like I said, apply and chance and do the other things, right? So I have one really good axe. So where is that at? I bought it from one of the traders. Yeah, this one here. I have a sharpness, 10, mending, capturing, looting five, and I'm breaking, right? So I want to go ahead and uh, pull those off. So if I wanted to pull these off, I should be able to grab this here, right? Let's do that. Go ahead and grab ourselves. I grabbed a bunch of books, right? Then we also need something else here, a chest, right? <laughs> we need an output uh, inventory. Uh, we have alchemicals right on me, too. Why am I even in there? Go ahead and do that. Nah. Go ahead and uh, make sure the second output. I'm not sure how that works. We'll just put both on push, I guess. Push. And this one here will be chantless. No. What is this? I can't remember how these work. I'm actually going to have to look at these for a bit. Okay. Okay. Kind of forget. Second output and this output. We'll just push both of those two. So that should be good there. So if I want to remove a enchantment, I should be able to take the ax and pop it in here, right? And give it some books. And it should be able to just pull the enchants. Does everything like, oh, this must be the tool when it's done, right? Yes, I understand what this one is. So we'll go to uh, push on that one, right? Yo, we got uh, our capturing two, sharpness 10, mending, breaking three, and it's gonna get looting five as well. And then it goes up there. Okay, so I understand that one. And then I can go ahead and guess and grab this sword here. If I wanted to give it, uh, we'll give it the sharpness 10 first, because why not? Did I actually go on? Oh, pulled it out. That's kind of weird how that works. Oh, this slot. Why would you want to have an export slot on this? That actually confuses me. Why would I even want this? Yeah, sharpness 10, right? There you go. Then puts that to the output. That makes much more sense. <laughs> there you go. Then I probably want to go ahead and put the... I don't need mending on this for sure. We'll put looting on this as well. That is cool. And then, yeah, then we got ourselves a sharpness 10 looting 3 sword. So, yeah, just a really easy way to kind of move our chance around. That actually works pretty well. Actually, I might not even bother with the chest now, I think, on this one. Because anything I do, I'm not going to be doing anything in bulk, right? Would I be doing bulk enchanting? No. <laughs> so I think this is actually kind of pointless on this one. And I guess on this one, it's even pointless because I'll be standing here for both of these machines. The next thing I want to do here is go ahead and make the enchantment library from Apotheosis. And I've never used this thing before, so I don't know how it works, but apparently it kind of like bulk store enchantments. Quite curious to see how it works here, but uh, we're going to do that here in a second. Need some potions of regeneration though. So let's get that done. Hopefully, I can't remember if I have bookshelves in here either. So there's like a process to doing this stuff, but anyway, do that. Why, why no output? Oh, wrong potion. <laughs> there you go. Because uh, we need four of these, I think. Four of these hell shelves here to kind of get this done. I don't know why I'm putting a hell shelf in there. But anyway, do that. There you go. We got four of them. And apparently we have to enchant these too, right? So I think we just take them here. And hopefully it's the only enchant we get. Infusion. I don't want it this high level though. It said it only had to be 45, I think is what it said. Let's check that out. Like, does it, like, can it be higher? I don't know how that works, to be honest. Yeah, infusion, 45. Maybe if I pull some of these off, I can get uh, more optimal. <laughs> Enchanting level? Because I don't want to waste a whole bunch of levels if I don't need to. Go ahead, do that there. 96. Ugh. Maybe more. <laughs> uh, da -da. Go and uh, try that again. See where we're at. Fusion at 84. Holy moly. How many of these do I have to pull off to get us at a better level? Tombstone. It was 45. Looks like I need one more. Or maybe not. Actually, how can this be so much? Wait. Each one of those is three. 
And these are five, so that's 15, so that's 30 levels. And that's another 15. Yeah, that should be like 60 enchanting, right? Something like that, just with that? Is that is that actually correct? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I keep pulling these off, right? Yeah, this is so crazy how high level enchanting I can do. There we go. That one's only wasting three levels, so I'll go ahead and do that. So we got an infused one. There you go. That's the fusion. Fantastic. Let's try that a couple more times. Yeah, pulling those off seems to work out quite well, actually. Awesome. So that should work. We'll kind of see if we can actually craft this thing. Should go ahead and uh, throw these things back down, though. Like that. This here. That looks good. I just want to see how this thing works, uh, works because apparently it can, uh, like I said, bulk store enchantments. And that just sounds fantastic all around. Yeah, there we go. Enchantment library. And then we go ahead and uh, pop this down here somewhere, I guess. We'll just, uh, that looks pretty. <laughs> That's a little weirder with the shading. Maybe I'll move that a little bit. I don't think it actually has to be part of the setup, right? I think it's kind of uh, its own independent thing. We'll put it right here right now. And then I think you just right click a chance on it or maybe you put them in. Ah, so you put them in. Oh, it even breaks them down. Wait, how does this work? I'm going to fill this up kind of take a look at it. This is crazy. So if I wanted backstabbing, I just click it and it gives me a backstabbing. Huh. Max level available, three. How do you grab a higher level? Oh, you just keep clicking. Oh. So it gives you a book based on your highest level enchant that you put in there. That is crazy. So if I put my sharpness 10 in there, can I just forever pull out sharpness 10s if I have enough sharpness? You know what I mean? Is that how that works? Because I'm not really sure if that's how it works or not. But if so, that would be pretty rad. I've never really thought about the enchantment extractor before, but this thing's kind of broken. Literally just power in a book and you get everything back. Like it's straight up broken. Like I don't even know what the fluid tank's for. We're actually not using that at all. But you just pull all your enchantments off at no real cost because you still get the armor back. You know what I mean? It's all just sitting in there. It's all super simple. Hopefully it works on this stuff too, actually. It even works on this stuff. Look at that. That is crazy. This is such a good little machine. This thing is uh, fantastic. Yeah, I can even pull it off these ones. Oh my goodness, this is so good. Look at all my books in here that we have. I don't. I have a lot of weird ones. I need to look at uh, what a lot of these do. I don't even know what a lot of them do, to be honest. Like hammer mobility, increases the attack speed of the hammer. Really? What mod? I have no idea. Anyway, some weird ones in here, so I'll definitely have to look at those at some point. But I was looking at the protection here. We actually have 100 points of protection, right? And if I want to grab books, so that's one. Then I can grab two. And now it costs two points. Then it goes up to four points, so we're up to four now. And then I can do it again. I'm up to five. I get up to six. I go up to seven. <laughs> Apparently I need to get a level eight protection book before I go higher than that. She doesn't tell you how high it goes. Protection. Maybe eight might be the top. I guess I only have a seven. Either way, that's insane. That's insane. I don't know if you can actually get the books higher than that. Uh, I think it depends on how the mods set when they put it into the pack. Because I think there's a way of getting like level 31 um, enchants with certain setups. If you have insane amounts of experience. But yeah, I'm going to get uh, really high level protections now. There you go. And six. And I can put these on my armor. And then pull them off anytime I want, right? There's nothing holding me back from uh, putting these on. Am I going to need the applicator for this, though? I didn't even think about that. I may need the uh, applicator. How much experience is that? Gonna Six levels? Really? That's it? Seven? Yeah, I, I don't mind if I do. Go ahead and uh, put that on there. And then, yeah, on the pants, I guess. We'll put a six. And with two pieces of armor, we have level 13. Yeah, level 13 production just like that this could get crazy silly you could get so insanely just unkillable <laughs> it'd be just completely broken yeah i'm gonna have to go ahead and uh, flush out the rest of the upgrades for this but there was one there i want to do which one is it the rectification it's one of the reasons i'm not really doing a chance yet because that randomness from the quanta but the rectification which one is that there not masterful these here i need five of these and the thing that's holding me back is the honey blocks I have to do more infusing as well, but the honey blocks, I need to go ahead and see if the uh, vanilla method works on honey, actually. So apparently we do have uh, beehives in the pack. I actually found quite a few of them so far. I'm gonna see this in a second there. Did I just get another one? I did too. There you go. 
These are the, what are these ones here? Carpenter bees. Then I got a vanilla beehive as well. So I'm just surrounding uh, saplings with uh, uh, flowers because that, that's the way you do the vanilla stuff, right? Anyway, go ahead and get a little closer here. There you go. See if we'd actually get another one. No, we didn't get another one. But uh, yeah, I've just been picking these up and uh, they respond to self-touch too. So I guess uh, that's something to know as well. But uh, yeah, we have uh, have bees, man. I can definitely get bees. I guess I'll just have to make a little area for them. I don't even think we need much to make the bee seed from um, mystical agriculture. Like I looked at the, what was it here? There's a seed. It was like honey seed, I think, right? This one right here. So I could go this route too, but I would need, what is that? Eight bottles and eight honeycombs, which wouldn't be horrible. But uh, I'm not sure how these guys work here too with the these oak nests. Like I don't know if they'll produce honey in this. Maybe they will, or maybe I'm just better off going ahead and uh, making one of their kind of hives from the mod as well. Probably better off making one of the hives from the mod. But like I said, I need to go ahead and uh, read about that mod because uh, I've never used that mod before. It's uh, completely new to me. Well, I think we just got another one. That's why I broke like that, right? Yeah, there's another one right there. Look at that, getting all the bees. <laughs> I know how these ones work. I'm going to have to read a book about these ones here or watch a video. But, uh, yeah, we definitely have our honey, and I'll be able to get into the uh, rectification and did finally do my enchanting. Then start working on progression in the pack because uh, I've been doing all this enchanting and stuff just for fun. So, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, probably end this video here, I think. I'm going to end this one here. So, as always, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. really liked it, hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. Well, you guys all have a good one. See you guys in the next video. Later.